Hi everybody. Hi Kate. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Um, make sure you get the link to the um the pay, the doc the the handout or the document for today. It's here. Otherwise, it will be difficult to read. I think on the screen share. Hello. Hi, hi, Jose. How are you? Hi. How are you? I'm good. Okay. How's Martin? <laughs> yeah, he. Well, I really don't know. He he does whatever thing he wants to do. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, that's good. You you're providing him with an excellent life. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> he uh, he ran out of money. <laughs> Yeah, that's the last cats do all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> Today I bought my cats. I have three cats, and I bought them this. It's like we call it catnip. I don't know how you say this in Spanish or Portuguese. Catnip. It's like a yeah. herb, and it makes them go crazy. They love it. <laughs> okay, can you type it, please? I did. It's in the chat. Catnip. Okay, let me see. Oh. Uh, I think it's not working, this chat box. Oh, here, I, I put it in the other one. Okay, here it is. Catnip. Catnip. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, well, what would it be? Don't know. Let me <laughs> see if there's a translate. <laughs> I don't know. It's I don't know what it, the herb is really called. Oh, uh, let's get an herb for, for cats. Yeah, it's like a... Yeah, it's like an herb. It's like a plant, and it's dried and in small yeah. pieces. And you you throw it, and they they roll in it. They love ah, it. Okay, it's not you, not to eat. Not to eat. No, no, no. no. But they they just oh, yeah. love to. Um, it it attracts them, I guess, in some way. Something like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're funny when you look. Them yeah. <laughs> yes. it, it makes them crazy. Yes, it's so sometimes, uh, but it is something when they allow you to to look yeah, at them. That's right. Exactly right. That's right. Sometimes <laughs> they they don't want anybody to to look at them playing. That's right. Exactly. Okay, so um, has everybody uh, had a chance to download the the document for today? So I I see like Fulvio. I don't know. You may be a new student. I'm not sure. Um, Christina, I know. Amir, I know. Mohammed, I know. Carrera, I know. So just checking <laughs> to make sure that you're able to download the the article, or else it or else yeah. it's very difficult. Okay. So are there are there problems? Everybody has it. Uh, where? Sorry. Where is the link? Uh, uh, it's in here, and well, I'll put it in both chats. It's in the Colingo chat, and then also I'm going to put it in the other chat, just in case. Thank you. Sure.
Okay, and Frikar, were you able to get it? And Christina, Amir? Yes, teacher, I am. You're okay, all good? I'm done. You, okay. okay, good. Excellent. Okay, so um, this article is about the issue of global warming, uh, which we all are familiar with, so this is why I picked it. <laughs> and also in this article, um, there are a lot of um, expressions that may help you um, in your reading. So um, let me just go over a few of these. Um, so, uh, okay. Okay, so uh, one expression is this, a low ball estimate or offer. Um, okay, so this expression, and by the way, I'm in the Colingo chat, so if you're not using the Colingo chat, make sure you install it so that you can see what I'm typing. Okay, so a lowball estimate or a lowball offer is, um, it's a, an offer or um, a prediction that that's low, either a low amount of money or um, a low amount of damage. In other words, it's it's kind of small. So low ball means sort of a small um, a small offer or a small prediction. Kg. Yes. What are, what are you explaining now? I'm explaining the phrase a low ball estimate. Where is that? Um, well, it's in the um, it's in the article that we are going to read. I, we haven't started the article yet. <laughs> but I didn't see that. It's, it 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 begin with uh, since 1896. Yes, that's correct. But later, you I'm. Um, there are many expressions here that they come l a little bit later. It's not the very first words. It's a little later. Okay, a the, low the ball. The blue, the blue, the blue words. Or? Yeah, it's like the third or fourth paragraph. Okay. We, we haven't. Yeah, it's, I'm just letting you know in advance so that when we come to it, you have some idea what it mm -hmm. means, and then we can talk about it more. Okay. Okay, and then another expression they use there is called the holy grail of blank. So, um, the holy grail of soccer, or the holy grail of hockey, or the holy grail of um, archaeology, right? So, the holy grail means the most important thing you can get. Teacher, can you write that sentence, please? Yes. I'm writing it in the chat. All right, and then I also used it in a sentence for you to help you understand. This this expression, it, it has Christian origins, and it refers to the, the cup that Jesus used at the Last Supper, uh, the Holy Grail, we call it. And many people have been looking for this cup for 2,000 years, right? <laughs> um, but... Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we've found it, but the expression refers to any really coveted or any highly respected reward or accomplishment. We call the holy grail of something. <laughs> okay, so now I, um, we can start. Could you repeat about the lowball estimate? Sure, lowball just means uh, a small estimate just means um, uh, uh, like a low monetary amount, a small amount, or 
um, a, a small estimate. It just means small. A small estimate or prediction or offer. Uh, so let me give an example. Um, All right, here's an example. Um, I have been a teacher for 30 years. I thought that his lowball salary offer was insulting. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's just an example. <laughs> so yeah, it just means a small amount, like really, really small, almost insignificant <laughs> lowball. Okay, very good. All right, so we can begin here. Let me, I'm going to try to screen share this for you, even though it won't show very well, but um, I'll do my best. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, Muhammad, you were correct. It does begin with the sentence since 1896. So um, this article is called A Change in Temperature, mm -hmm. and it's, it's part of the science section of uh, the New York Times. And um, the New York Times is probably the best paper we have here in the United States. So I want to give you um, an example of the best America has to offer. <laughs> okay. So, here we go, okay, <laughs> very good. Okay, so it says since 1896, scientists have been trying to answer a deceptively simple question. What will happen to the temperature of the Earth if the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere doubles? Okay, so this is the big question about global warming, right? What will happen to us when this when this happens? <laughs> All right. All right. Who would like to read? Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay, Mohammed. Good. So uh, you can start with some recent scientific papers. Uh, yeah. Good. Sure. Some, some recent scientific papers have made a splash by claiming that the answer might not be as bad as previously feared. This poll, if it holds up, offers a translizing possibility that climate change might be slow and limited enough that the human society could be, uh, could adapt it to could adapt to it without major trauma. Okay, very good. Okay, so now we have some more expressions. Made mm -hmm. a splash. Uh, I have one question about the trying to answer at the, as, uh, deceptively. Oh, what okay. Deceptively. De yeah. Uh, deceptively. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Let me it's think. New about that. Point. Sure. Um, Trying hardly. Deceptive means hard to detect. Um, so if something yeah. is if something is deceptively simple, um, it means that it seems simple, but it's really not. Okay. So I'm going to um, hold on. Deceptively simple. Uh, so, for Splash. example, uh, Rick. what does Splash mean? Splash. Oh, um, Splash, like if you jump in the water, it goes A Splash. I see. Yeah, so um, 
Yeah, like when kids are playing around in the swimming pool, they often they get out of the pool and they run and then they jump. And it makes a big splash. <laughs> and they love that. Cuz everybody gets wet. Yeah. So if we say that something made a big splash, it means that it was noticed, right? That, you know, imagine if you're by a swimming pool and you get water on you, you... So the expression means that um, this argument or this uh, claim that maybe global warming isn't so bad after all has has been noticed by people, right? Okay. And uh, what about over the tantalizing? Ah, uh, tantalizing. Uh, tantalizing yeah. means very attractive. Okay. Uh, um, okay, so now I don't know. Hmm, I, I don't want to, I don't want to talk too much, but if you know about Greek mythology, there was a story about Tantalus, <laughs> um, and this is where the word comes from. Anyway, it's a long story, but Tantalus was punished by the gods so that he forever and ever and ever, for all eternity, when he would bend down to get a drink of water, the water would move away from him. And when he would reach up to get an apple, the apple would move away from him. So he spent his whole eternity being tantalized by drink, by water, and food. <laughs> that was his punishment. <laughs> Teacher, yeah. for example, uh, if I'm hungry and somebody gives me food, it's tantalized for me. Yeah, it's tantalizing, yeah. And tantalizing usually means that you don't have it yet. You you want it. You you want to have it, but yeah. So if they if the food is just sitting there and you see it, you're tantalized. <laughs> ah, right. Yeah, you're like, oh wow, it's like a big chocolate cake, right there. <laughs> you're like, whoa, wow, yeah. And then you have to decide: it do I want to be thin or do I want the cake? <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. <laughs> Tantalizing. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Teacher, uh, is it that I say tantalize, or do I have to say the ing at the end? No, no, no. It's 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 a verb. So um, to tantalize is the main verb, and tantalizing can be used as an adjective, right? So you could say um, the chocolate cake was tantalizing. Mm. Or you can say I was tantalized by the cake. So either way, it can be a verb or an adjective. OK, who would like to read next? Where are we? Yes. OK, who's that? What? Is that Didi? Several, oh, okay. Se several, very good. Good. several scientists say there they see uh, reasons to doubt that those low ball stimulants uh, will in fact stand up to critical scrutiny uh, and a wave of papers offering count counter arguments is already in the work. The story isn't over, said Chris Forrest, a climate except at Tull the recent uh, body of evidence and the political use the climate countries are, are making of it claim that everything fine sheet some light or on where we are in our uh, scientific and public understanding of the risk of climate change okay very good okay so here again we have quite a few um, I told you about lowball estimates now um, to stand up Um, this means to withstand. So let me give you an example.
Okay, so here's an example. It is doubtful that his inexperience as a lawyer can stand up to the Supreme Court of the United States. <laughs> this means that, you know, there's he has no hope, right? <laughs> he's never going to he's never going to make it. Okay. So it says uh, several scientists doubt that these lowball estimates will stand up. In other words, they won't survive the criticism of others, right? But still, um, you know, this is what some people think. Okay, um, then. Oh, also to shed some light. This is another expression. Oh, okay, and Jose, a counter-argument is an argument that goes against um, your argument. So, for example, suppose you want to argue that um, God exists, right? So you give your argument that God exists. Then somebody may say, no, 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 I don't think so, and here's why. That would be a counter argument. They're going to try to refute you, try to show you that you're wrong. So what we have here in this article is we have one set of scientists who say, eh, global warming, it's not that bad. It's going to be OK. That's this side. Then we have the other side that's like, uh, no, it's terrible. <laughs> we need to do something. So we have two like opposing views, right? Very good. Okay, are there any other questions about this so far? Yeah. Can yeah. I use it as a verb? Say again. Can I use it as a verb? Yes. Uh, yes. The verb would be to counter argue. Sure. Uh -huh. To counter argue, that you could use that as a verb. Uh huh. Counter argument is a noun, but you can also use it as a verb and say to counter argue. Yeah, and one word the, in the fact stand up to the critical scrutiny. What is oh what scrutiny? Yes, yeah, scrutiny. Scrutiny, scrutiny. Yeah. Scrutiny means looking really closely at something. Okay. So, for example, let me give you a sentence. Um, all right, here's an example. The art experts scrutinized the painting to be sure that it was not a forgery. So it means to look really carefully at something and to be sure that it's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Okay. All right. Uh, Frikar, would you like to read the topic under discussion? Yes. Okay, very good. The topic under discussion is a number called climate sensitivity. Finding this number is the holy grail of climate science because the stakes are so high. The fate of the air hangs it in the balance. Okay, very good. Okay, so holy grail. Uh, this whole thing about global warming um, is really important. <laughs> um, so it's the holy grail of climate science. Okay, and then um, hangs in the balance means, um, how can I describe that? Oh, Frakar, I think we're muting you because we hear an echo from you. 
I think that's I think that's what's happening. So, I don't know. Can you check to make sure you have everything um, closed, uh, just in case? Okay. Who would like to read next? Anybody? Jose? Yeah, sure. Or... Okay, Mohammed. I think you read once, right? Is there anybody else who would like to read? I can. Okay, okay. very good. Fulvio, go ahead. The first to take. The first to take a serious tab. But it was a sweet name it Swenty Arrhenius in the late 19th century. After laborious calculation, he declared that uh, if human double the carbon dioxide in the air be burning fossil fuel, the average temperature of the earth will rise by something like 9 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, Whopping figure. Very good. Okay, so whopping means very big. Okay. Um, okay, and then um, by something like means an estimated. An estimate. Okay, so the word whopping means very, very big, and the expression by something like means an estimate. All right, very good. Who's next? Who would like to read? Maybe Christina or Jose? Yes, I will. Okay, good. Uh, he was on the high side. Is it a turn, turn it out? In 1979, after two decades, of meticulous measurements had made it clear that, that the carbon dioxide level was in that rising. Scientists use computers and much deeper understanding of the climate to calculate a likely range of warning. They found a response to doubling of carbon dioxide would not be much below that degrees F. Fahrenheit. Now, was this, it likely to exceed to exceed eight degrees? Okay, very good. Okay, so we had this scientist in like 1800 who said, "Hey, if we double the carbon dioxide, the temperature of the Earth will raise by nine degrees Fahrenheit." That was like a hundred years ago, but now they're saying. Nah, it won't be that bad. It will be maybe around three degrees Fahrenheit, right? <laughs> so um, this is why they think that maybe global warming won't be so bad, right? Does it make sense? Yes. Yes. Questions? Okay. Very good. Let's continue. In the year since, anybody? Jose or Fricar? Okay, I'll try. Okay, good. Jose, good. In the years since, scientists have been pushing and pulling within that range, trying to settle on a most likely value. Most of those who are expected in climatology subscribe to a best estimate figure of uh, just over 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, very good. Okay, so pushing and pulling. This means fighting. <laughs> okay, um, can you please excuse me for just one second? Back. Sorry.
Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. <laughs> Not a problem. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> sometimes okay. when I'm here by myself, it's um difficult because people come to the door. Anyway, um, okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm expecting a few things to happen. Um, is this class full? I think so. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, there should be room for one more. Because now it can hold nine students, so there should be you should be able to come in, Mohammed. I think it's full. Okay, were there questions about anything so far that we've read? It to sit alone is to like to try to decide. Yes. Uh huh. Exactly. Uh huh. It's trying to way. settle on. Uh huh. Yes. Trying to decide. So. To settle on means to decide. To decide exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very you. good, Juan. <laughs> okay. So it sounds like they're saying, "Eh, it won't be more than five degrees." <laughs> All right. Who would like to read next? Anybody? Me. Maybe Rogerio or Car. I I can. Okay, thank you. Uh, that may not sound like a particularly scary number to many people. Uh, after all, we experience temperature variations of 20 or 30 degrees in a single day. But as an average for an entire planet, 5 degrees is a huge number. Okay. All right. So far, so good. Next. Who have I? I Karar. I don't think I've heard you yet today. <laughs> Would you like to read or no? I, I don't want to make you if you don't want to. Can I, can I continue? Uh, sure. Let's see. Okay. Has everybody had a chance? I think so. Okay. Okay, yes, you can continue, Ro Rosario. That's fine. Okay. I have read that. The ocean. Okay. Well, I'll the let ocean. Rosario go, and then Carrara, you can read next. Okay. The ocean covering 70% uh, of the surface helps bring down to the average, but the warming is expected to higher over land, causing weather streams like uh, heat waves and torrential rains and the poles will warm even more so that the increase in the Arctic uh, could exceed 10 or 15 degrees Fahrenheit that could cause substantial meeting of the polar ice sheets ultimately flooding the world's major coastal cities. Mm. Okay, very good. Wow, this is kind of scary, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, I know I live in a coastal city. How many of you live in a coastal city? <laughs> Do any of you live near the beach? I live. Okay, so... I. <laughs> <laughs> we would yeah. be flooded, I think, it sounds like. <laughs> wow, okay, very good. Uh, okay, let's see here, I'm sorry. Um, okay, what's new? Who would like to read next? Was it um, Karar? I think you said you wanted to be next, right? Yes. Oh, so that, what's yes, it? Jose, so that means thus, you're correct. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. What's new in the several recent papers have over the best estimate for climate sensitivity uh, that are below 4 degrees Fahrenheit, rather than the briefest best estimate of just above 5 degrees. And they have also suggested that the highest estimate are pretty implausible. Okay, very good. So implausible means unlikely. Uh, so, uh, so some people, so we have kind of, we have like a fight going on here between the scientists. 
So some scientists think that um, global warming may happen as much as by 10 or 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Others are like, no, it won't be that bad. <laughs> Maybe three degrees. So um, they're fighting about it right now. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are there any questions? Oh, and then also, I notice here in this, they say pretty, Im pretty implausible. This means very, um, in this case, pretty can, it can mean very attractive or beautiful, but it can also mean very. So um, if you, someone says, how are you doing today? You might say, well, okay, but I'm pretty tired, right? If you say, I'm pretty tired, that means I'm very tired. <laughs> so when you see this, uh, word pretty like this, it means very. Does that make sense? I don't know why we use this word like this. <laughs> I, I thought can... pretty it was in a pretty girl. Yeah, it can be that too. Absolutely. You can say like, woo, woo, pretty girl, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> But also, we use it this other way, too. So, yes, it can be very frustrating, English, because, um, like, if you say, I'm pretty tired, you, you know I'm not talking about a girl, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so you have to use the context or listen to what the person is talking about. But if you, yeah, but if they say, oh, wow, look at her. She's, isn't she pretty? Then you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Mohammed said beautiful tired. <laughs> yeah, beautiful tired. Right. He's kidding, I think. <laughs> That's right. It's not possible, right? It's yeah, silly. It's just but this is a word that we use very often in American English and in especially like today we're reading from a newspaper, like one of the best newspapers that we have here. So and that and they use this word. So, so this shows you how popular it is. We use it all the time. <laughs> okay, very good. Next. Who's my next uh, reader? <sighs> Hurry. Can Anybody? I read the teacher? Please, yes, continue. Okay. Is not this? Notice that these, uh huh. Notice that these recent calculations fall well within the long asset range, just on the lower end of it. But the papers have caused considerable excitement among climate change contrarians. All right, a contrarian is somebody who's against something. Uh, teacher, I have a question with that word among. I think okay. it's like between. Yes, uh huh, exactly. But uh, it use it with more than two things. Am I right? I uh, have caused considerable excitement among climate. Yes, it. Yes, among means that there's more than two climate change scientists who who are against the idea of global warming. So you're correct. However, I I don't see a, this war a lot. Among? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, it's I think it's quite common actually. Um, especially in this um, at this level, we say it often, right? So you might see something that says among among. Oh, let me think of an example. Um, among among people <laughs> yeah like I was trying to think of an example let's see here among highly paid executives um, only 5% are married I don't know something like this you might see something like like this among highly paid executives only 5% are married now I 
I have no idea if that's true. I just made that up. So you could see how to use the word among. And then, Jose, you have a good example. You are among us in this hangout. That's right. You are among friends here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it doesn't have to be between two people. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. We use the word between when there's two people and the word among when there's more than two. Okay. Can I say, for example, Who's most beautiful B2, B8, sorry, among Carola, Marta, and Maria? Yeah, you could say that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Good. These are good questions. Very good. <laughs> okay. Next. Uh, Fulvio, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Why don't you please read, it is not that? It is not that they actually agree with the new numbers, mind you. They have long pushed implausibly low estimate of climate sensitivity, below 2 degrees Fahrenheit in some case, but they appear to be calculating that any paper with a low-ball number is a step in their direction. Okay, very good. So, um, me and you is a bridge of a connection which will last forever. Yeah, you could say that, um, uh, Mohammed. Except in this case, you would say um, you would say you and I. In this case, <laughs> um, you and I are a bridge. In this case. But yes, <laughs> that will work. That's correct. Okay, very good. So, so we have these contrarians that don't they don't agree with all the all the numbers, you know, all the new research. But they are very happy to to look at the new research and say, see, they also get a low number. Uh, only two degrees Fahrenheit of warming, or only three degrees Fahrenheit of warming. Even if they don't completely agree with with the other people, they are very quick to point to them and say, see, they get the same result. <laughs> so we're trying to, um, it's a big fight to see who's who's correct and who's not. Oh, mind you, um, mind you, um, uh, let me think of an example, Jose. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is not, um, can we look at this, teacher? Yeah, um, yeah, pay attention, uh, uh, Mind you, be aware. I think that's that's the best thing to say. Mind you, uh, be aware. Uh huh. Be aware. So, so it says, you know, this is not blah blah blah. In other words, be aware. I said between you and you and me, a bridge of connection which will last for all. Day. Okay. I said between you and you and me. Between you and you and me. Okay, fair enough. I'll if take it because between is a preposition, so <laughs> very good. Okay. Um, so it is, a is it you know, common to say "mind you"? Yes, very common. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Yes, especially when you're saying something that is surprising, right? So, um, if you have something to say um, that mm, you think other people will find shocking or other people will find amazing, then you would say this, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, like, for example, suppose you go to the doctor. This is kind of a bad, I mean, it's kind of a sad example. But um, suppose you go to the doctor and he tells you that you have a really bad disease, okay? Um, a really bad disease. 
and then he says, he says, well, there are some really good medications now. You're like, oh, great, great. But then he says, now, mind you, this doesn't mean it will help you. But <laughs> so, in other words, um, yeah, mind you, like, pay attention now. It doesn't mean that this will be good for you. But there are some medication. Yeah. That, that's usually how it's used. It's um, when something kind of bad is said, usually. <laughs> Now, this doesn't mean that you will live, mind you. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and do doctors love it. Doctors love to say it. Oh, my God. Okay. Very good. All right, who's Teacher? next? Yes. Another question? Just low, low ball number. Oh, That's low ball number. The same thing. Small Just number? Means, yeah, low ball, like one degrees, two degrees, three degrees, something like this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next, James Anon. Who's going to read? Go ahead, Fakar. James Anna, a mainstream climate scientist working at Japanese Institute, offers a best estimate of four and a half degrees Fahrenheit. When he wrote recently that he thought some of highest temperature projections could be rejected. Skeptics could not contain their enthusiasm. I'm very good. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so this other guy said that, you know, this other guy here from Japan, I guess, he also says that the number Numbers are will be low. That the 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 rise in temperature will not be that much. Okay, very good. Who's next? Christina, how about you? Okay. <laughs> that is what we call landmark change, of course. Of course, no. Yes. By not, one right. climatology most renowned warmest scientist declared a blog named Pierre L. Glosling. If you have an can see it then then the writing is truly in Brazil on the wall. Very good. Okay, so this is from the expression the writing is on the wall. Yeah. Right? Uh, you probably have a similar expression in your languages, right? Uh, if I say, look, you can see the writing on the wall. It means that, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. It's coming, right? <laughs> so, like, for example, um, I can say something like, um, uh, I could say books will... By digital... This is like a uh, are you go to work in Yeah. She's back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Okay, so yeah, it means it means like if I say traditional books will be replaced by digital books, the writing is on the wall. It means that there's no stopping it, right? It's it's obvious that that's what's going to happen. So we have the same expression here. Okay, very good. Next. It says, uh, but this sort, but does this sort of claim that we can all breathe a sigh of relief about climate change really hold up? In other words, this means, is this really true? Does it hold up? Is it really true? Yeah. <laughs> so that's what they're asking. And then it says, um, Dr. Anand said in an email 
that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, a mainstream body that periodically summarizes climate science, should be bolder about ruling out extreme temperature scenarios. But he still believes global warming is a sufficient threat to warrant changes in human behavior. Okay. Okay. Questions about any of this? Okay, so let me we covered a lot of different uh, different things today, a lot of expressions. So we talked about the pretty meaning very. We talked about the holy grail. <laughs> um, we talked about mind you, right? Be aware. Um, um, we talked about implausible. This means unlikely. Right. I'm sorry. And what? What else? Makes a blush. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Make a splash. Oh yes, make a splash. That's right. Make a splash. Very good. Make a splash. The wall thing. You're funny. <laughs> make a splash. This means um, to be noticed. Among. Uh, the, the wall balance. thing. The writing is on the wall. <laughs> I'm now. I'm curious. Do you have the a same the same expression in your home languages? The writing is on the wall. No. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the writing is on the wall. It means that it's unavoidable, that there's nothing you can do. It's coming, right? No. <laughs> um, it is, um, it, it is unavoidable. <laughs> yeah. Inevitable, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah. I know, uh huh. Right. The, in other words, because. The thing is, once the writing is on a wall, you can't get rid of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not really. You can try to paint over it, but, I mean, it's there. So, yeah, the writing. Among, good, Frekar, among, very good. We talked about that. Um, the Holy Grail, make a splash. Very good. So you learned a lot of um, common expressions that you would see when you're reading just a regular newspaper here in the in the in the US very good excellent are there questions about this or comments oh yeah a counter argument good Jose good memory about, you guys <laughs> about paper I, I saw that word a lot and papers like just to to say on uh, maybe a document a research Yes, they do. Uh huh. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Yep. I have a I have a question. Okay, please. So I remember you said uh, two two parties of scientists are arguing about the fact that uh, about the effects of the global warming. Right. Uh huh. So um, what one party say that it will only rise three. Three um, Fahrenheit. Yeah, two or three, right? And the other says how many? Like as much as fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. That's a lot of difference between. Big them. difference, right? Which right. Which is weird. It is very weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's very weird, right? Mm -hmm. Then wh why are they arguing? They should <laughs> study together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they need, yeah, exactly. And what I would ask is, what, like, how are they getting these numbers? Like, what's yeah. the math? I mean, yeah. So I would want, I like you, Mohammed, I would want to know more. Like, what? what? That's a big, that's a big difference. I, I think most, most people maybe think, the temperature will raise like 10, 10, between 3 and 10 degrees. So, but that's still a lot. Between 3 and 10, that's 7 degrees. That's, that's a lot, I think. It is. Yeah. Yeah, especially like when you consider like 7 degrees, you know, just forever, right? I mean, it's 
<laughs> it's it'll just melt everything, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we can't even laugh about it. No, not really. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm being entertaining just to try to help you remember. But um, yeah, it's not funny. <laughs> so. Some of you smart young engineers out there are going to have to find a solution to this problem. <laughs> no solution. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a solution. I mean, right? I mean, for every problem, there's a solution, right? Uh, you can't have one without the other. Uh, but finding that solution is going to be is going to be difficult, I think. So, all right. Now, in case let me see here, I have some new students here today. So let me give you this. Um, all right. If you are a new student, this is the link for um, Colingo, the Facebook. And if you, I also usually, if I can remember, which I am right now, I'm. If you need to ask me any questions or you need to get in touch with me, I don't know. You have a problem, a question, anything, um, you can just write on the wall of this Facebook page. This is my Facebook page, and uh, I'll answer your questions. I usually get one or two questions or so a week, uh, and I try to answer them as best I can for everybody. <laughs> yeah, and so it's just another way for you to have a resource that doesn't cost anything, right? Because some, sometimes students have questions and mm, their answers are not really anywhere on the internet. It's not like you can just type in your question and find the answer that you're looking for. Sometimes you need to ask like a teacher. So a yeah, that's what this uh, that's what this is. So at least that's been my experience when students have questions, they they can't really find the answers often. Um, just looking around in a textbook or on the internet. So they need to ask somebody. All right, very good, everybody. Okay, so I think I have one more class today. I think it's current events. Uh, maybe I shall see some of you uh, also at this at this class, eh? right? What time is he at this class? Um, in an hour from now, so it'll be, I think, uh, 17 Pacific, Pacific Daylight Time, something like this, in about an hour. Okay, everyone, thank you so much, and um, a really good job on the reading and excellent questions. So you, you are to be commended. <laughs> okay, thank okay, you. thank sure. you. Yeah, all right, everyone, thank I'll see you, you soon. Bye. See you. Bye.